Hi church family, you're watching Izzy in Christ. I thought I would do this video because this is a very important topic. Uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about was spiritual abuse because it does happen. It is a reality and it's a real problem in our church or in the world, I should say, not just in our, like in a church. Like when I say church, I mean like the entire church body because it does affect us. Um, so I wanted to share a little bit about my experience um, because I know that there are other people that have experienced some of these things. Um, though some of the things I'm gonna list off today, they're not things that I went through particularly, not everything. Um, and so I just want to share my experience and what I did to overcome it because I overcame it and so can you or somebody that you know, um, if they're going through it or have, if they have been through it. So like what I did is, yeah, even though it was really hard to go through it, it was humiliating. It was embarrassing. It was just not pleasant and, you know, I was going through so much during that time, but you know, God held me together <laughs> during that time. Um, so I prayed, I still fellowshiped with other Christians during that time. I was patient though. I felt like that was like, <laughs> I, I was really running out of patience at that point. And most importantly, I trusted God. Uh, that was a really difficult lesson to learn during that time what it is to trust God when everybody else around you is failing you. It definitely was not the easiest thing to go through. And I just wanted to share um, scripture actually from Isaiah 41 verse 10 to remind you that in case this is something that you're going through, um, so for Isaiah 41 10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the the right hand of my righteousness. And he did during that time. It didn't feel like it, of course, because I think we get trapped in this idea of, oh, well, I don't feel like God cares and I don't feel like, you know, God is holding me up, but he definitely was during that time. I stayed at that church, even though I was going through the things I was going through. Sometimes I wonder why I did. Actually, no, I do know why I did. Um, I won't go on too much about that. Uh, but one of the reasons I did is because if I left that church, I would have had no church and I needed to be in church. Even if I didn't really understand why I felt like God was abandoning me at that time. But I wanna let you know that it's not just churches that do this. This can be family members. This can be friends who do this. This can be, um, yeah, you know, pastors. I mean, like everybody, like, you know, the media has already made it sound like, you know, pastors are the worst thing possible. <laughs> you know, that they're not these wonderful people that, you know, everybody thinks they are. And that's not true. I have met pastors that are not so great. And I have met some that are wonderful, wonderful people. I mean, yeah, I know that, you know, you never know with people behind closed doors. Like, I get that. Like, I'm not naive. But, I mean, I will say that there are people that, like, even if, you know, behind closed doors, they come across one way. Like, even in person, it shows sometimes. Um, not all of them are like that. And I have met Christians, too, that, you know, they, they have... Um, you know, they have, the, they bear the fruits that the scriptures talk about. They, you know, the, the scriptures tell us that you will know them by their fruit. And so there are pastors I trust and there are some that, you know, I kind of keep them at an arm's length. <laughs> um, how, like at my church, no, not the, the current one that I'm going to know. They're, they're both wonderful people as far as I'm concerned. Um, <laughs> so I just wanted to let you know that, you know, like, I know that it, it feels horrible to be going through it, but I want you to know that you're not alone, that God is with you through this whole thing. And there are people that will listen. There are people that will, you know, empathize with you. Like, even if you don't have anyone around you, try looking for people online that are going to be there. 
you know, because that does make a difference. I did reach out to friends online in person as well, but um, I had to look outside of that church that I was going to at the time. It's not the current one that I'm at. It was, this is a different one. This was before, I'll say 2020. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to mention just some of the ways that spiritual abuse can happen in churches. So one of which would be humiliation and that can happen in several different ways like off the top of my head what i can think of is you know people who use scriptures against you like oh you haven't forgiven so and so then you must not be a good christian it says in the bible that if you don't forgive blah 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 right i've dealt with that i mean not just from people at at this church not really like not at this particular church but it has happened and to be fair yeah, I know that that is important. I'm not trying to claim that, you know, forgiveness is not an important thing. It, it definitely is. But no one should be making you feel like you're lesser of a Christian because it's something maybe you struggle with. Um, I know that for me, it's something I still struggle with. I'm getting better. It's It wasn't an instant thing. And there are things that I went through in my past that made it really difficult for me not to uh, have that mentality or it's a bit of a hurdle for me. It's a struggle. Um, and then, you know, there's just other things like, uh, I think there's a verse in Roman that says, Romans that says like when you, when like the scales come off, I should have had that somewhere written for myself, but, um, <laughs> yeah. So the, the process of, san of, san of sanctification, excuse me, is one of those things that, um, so happens to like clean you up you know, over time. And it's not like, you know, as soon as you become a Christian, bam, like you're just perfect and like nothing's wrong with you anymore. No. Um, sanctification can take days, can take years, can take months. Like it can take, you know, it's not an instant thing always. And God is patient and merciful to wait for us. He has waited for me. There were quite a few different things that I used to do before that I don't really do anymore because I just don't desire it. And God is good like that. But anyway, nobody should be using scripture against you or making you feel like you're lesser of a Christian because your struggles are not theirs. Because I can assure you, they have struggles that you don't. And I mean, like, how would they feel if they were, if somebody was holding it against them? I will say that it's this, that it is important to have conviction and there isn't anything wrong with someone telling you that, oh yeah, you know, this is wrong or whatever. But what shouldn't be happening is belittling, where they're telling you that, oh, you know, yeah, you're not really saved then if this is your life or um, if this is what's going on with you, then yeah, no. And that's exactly what I went through. Like, um, anyway, it wasn't just the pastor of that church. It was, and like, no disrespect to him. I don't have any real problem with him. I just keep him at an arm's length, like I mentioned earlier. Um, because he made me feel like I was, you know, I was basically unsaved, that I was not good enough, that, um, you know, because I was dealing with like a lot of issues like depression, anxiety, and, um, you know, there were just some things that were like some circumstances I was going through that were very difficult. And, you know, it's not that he didn't try to be there for me. It's not like he didn't try to help me in those circumstances, but just emotionally, he just did not know how to be there in such a way that was helpful. And I know that I was also being difficult because I was just so frustrated. I was angry with God. And, you know, I mean, there are <clears throat> people who hold that opinion that, oh, well, if you're angry with God, then that's sinful. You shouldn't be angry with God. And that must mean you're not saved. That's not true. I mean, I'm sure uh, Jonah was angry with God because he didn't like the idea that he wanted to save those, um, the Israelites that time, uh, you know, but, and he even tried to resist God and tried to go the opposite direction, but God still brought him back around. And in a lot of ways, he kind of did that with me too, where he brought me back and helped me realize that it's like, no, you're, you're being rebellious, you're being difficult. And, but at the same time, like he, God did approach me in a way that was very loving. And that's another testimony video I'm going to have to share, like what was going on with me during that time. It was really not easy to go through that really dark phase. And just this pastor was not being the most supportive. And neither were the people at that church or the wife or just anyone. So I just felt very alone in all of that. 
And usually if a fellowship, if a group in fellowship is making you feel like that, like where you're just dealing with a problem by yourself or that you're lesser because you can't handle it, then yeah, that maybe it's time to go. <laughs> and I guess that was kind of a hint to me, but I was just kind of hoping things would get better. And that's very typical of any kind of abuse that's happening where you just tend to feel like, um, you know, oh, well, it will get better. Typically in abusive situations, it will never get better. Like, I'm just gonna be real with you. Any time that you deal, you're dealing with someone who's abusive or a group of people that are abusive, they're not gonna change. You gotta get out of that situation and protect yourself. Um, the next one on my list is coercion and manipulation. And like, this can be anything like, I mean, off the top of my head, I can think of financially. Uh, so like, you know, they will put you in a position where you financially have to give to the church or you have to support some ministry and otherwise they make you feel like you're lesser or like they will just, they will do things. Like one of the things that I noticed that this pastor used to do, and again, I'm not trying to bad mouth anybody, but this was just very hurtful that this pastor used to do this. Like you would have a conversation with a pastor and then the next time he was preaching, he'd be talking about the topic you discussed with him. Like, and in a way he would, maybe he didn't do this to be abusive, but I just felt it was a bit hurtful that he did things like this, where like he would preach about that subject, that very subject and preach it in such a way where it's like he's talking at you so that you're in a position where you can't really answer because you're, you're with a congregation, you're there already and he's preaching and he's saying what he's got to say about the situation, about the situation he was talking to you in private about. Like he, he wasn't, like he was doing it in, in such a way that it was discreet. Like obviously he wasn't saying, oh, I was talking to such, so and so about, no, he was more so talking about like the, the, the topic that we were talking about. And he was preaching about it in such a way that just made me feel like, oh, like, is he directing this message at me? And like, I was in a position where I couldn't really defend my position. So it just, I didn't like that. I kind of found that to be a bit manipulative. Maybe that's the wrong word. But I just, maybe some people might even find that petty because it's just, it's inappropriate. Like, obviously we had that discussion in private. Let's just leave it in private. Talk about something else, preach about something else. Why are you bringing this up? And also nobody should be putting you in a position where you feel like financially you have to give. That's something that the Holy Spirit is supposed to make you feel like doing. Like God will put it on your heart if it's something you want to give for. No pastor, no preacher, no um, nobody in the church should be making you feel like you're lesser of a Christian because financially you can't give to the church. Um, and then the last one's kind of an obvious one, sexual abuse. So, you know, I mean, we learn about this in our workplaces. I don't know what ages you all are, but you know, um, in this current day and age, you know, in the workplace, they talk about, um, sexual abuse, sexual harassment in the workplace. The same rules apply within churches. So anybody who's giving you inappropriate stares, any touching, any words, any body language, expose it. Do not sit in silence. I know this is a hard topic to talk about, but do not allow yourself to, you know, um, don't allow yourself to internalize that. Don't feel guilty because you're you're telling someone, if you can't go to somebody in the church, go to someone outside and, and you know, if you need be, even call the police, report it to the police. They need to know what's going on. I mean, thankfully this is not, has not been my experience, but I have heard things, not about that church that I went to. Like, thank God that never happened there. But I have heard about these things happening. It's not just pastors. Sometimes it's other congregants. It's their spouses. It's, um, it, it can be anyone. It can be it can be a very known family member of that church and because you you know oftentimes what will happen is you'll feel like oh well i just i don't want to cause drama i don't want anybody to you know and and that's typically my approach too whenever i'm dealing with something i'm just like oh well i don't like that he does this and i'm very quiet about it though but no something like this is something that needs to be exposed do not sit in silence you'll only make that problem worse and also it could be happening to others within that church so you've got to stop this from happening. Um, but with my experience, you know, um, definitely reach out to the authorities if you're going through something. But anyway, with my experience, I just felt condemned. Like I, like I mentioned before, I was very angry with God and 
like I just like he just said like lots of things that made me feel like oh well then just maybe you're not saved if you don't care that you might be hurting God with your demeanor your attitude and maybe you just you're not saved and you know like he tried to talk to me about submitting to God which yeah that is an important subject that it's very important to teach your congregants that but you should never be holding it over their heads and making it feel like oh well you're you know because you haven't completely submitted all of your problems to God or all of, you know, because the truth is all of us to some degree struggle with surrendering and struggle with submitting ourselves and our problems to God, you know? And in my case, it was my financial situation. I was, you know, between jobs. I mean, you know, I would have one job, I would get fired and I just couldn't understand what was happening. The truth is I was going through a transition. Like I was, leaving like you know like the fast food stuff and the you know the face-to-face -face customer service stuff and I wanted to you know be in call centers and I wanted to work office jobs I, that's slightly different than what those jobs are and the pay is a little bit higher and so the expectations are a bit higher and so what he should have been saying to me is hey it's okay don't get discouraged you will get better you know it, it's a new environment for you so you're just not comfortable with it yet you will get comfortable it's okay if you get fired don't look at it like it's a you know it's the end of the world because that was my whole thing that it's like oh if you get fired then then you then you fail at life and no that's not true there's a lot of i guarantee you that there are ceos out there that are so successful i'm sure in the past at some point they have been fired from jobs they're not failures you're not a failure because you get fired from a job anyway i digress um Anyway, things got so bad at this church that this pastor literally, like, he actually commanded his ushers to make sure I didn't get served communion. I, I, I mean, at first I sort of questioned, like, you know, maybe it was a mistake, but I don't think so, because both of them, like, there were two gentlemen that were handing out um, communion that day, and they deliberately skipped me, both of them. And... Uh, you know, I questioned the pastor about it afterwards, and he was like, um, oh, you know, I, I mean, I know that this wasn't true, but he was like, oh, you know, it, it's really like a membership thing. I'm just trying to make sure that, you know, only members participate, but I, I promise that I saw, I saw a lady there that I know was not a member of that church taking communion, so I don't believe that for a second. And I know that in the past I had taken communion before that, that time. That was especially when I was going through such a dark, dark time in my walk. And so I don't know, maybe he felt that like he, he was responsible over my faith or something or like, you know, because yeah, you know, scripture talks about how, um, you know, pastors are responsible for their flock, but they should not, they're not in any position to say, oh, you're, yeah, you shouldn't take communion or you shouldn't, uh, you know, be involved in the church in any way because you're, you know, you're, you're questioning things and you're not in a healthy place. Um, you know, he, at the very least, you should have talked to me about it. At the very least, you should have come to me and told me, are you sure you want to take communion? Because keep in mind that although that probably would have been more damaging too, because as it is, he was making me feel condemned. It, it was awful. Like I, I'm just so thankful that, you know, God did assure me that I was his and he still to this day assures me that I am his. So praise God that I never, that I never believed that. I was hurt by him doing that, even though I was angry with God and I was questioning a lot of things. Like, I'm thankful that I still, you know, I still held on to my faith even after that. And I just wanted to say, you know, on a, on a final point that your faith is your own. Yeah, you might be going through struggles right now, and maybe you are angry with God, but just know that God isn't surprised by your frustration and your anger, and God doesn't hate you because you're hurting. God wants to be there for you. Remember Job, and I mean, honestly, if I have to be honest, it is like my least favorite book of scripture. I mean, I wish it didn't have to be that way, honestly, what happened to him, but I understand, like, now, at least to me, I understand that it was to remind me that God hadn't abandoned him. God didn't ab hasn't abandoned us either. God returned everything to him twofold, right? So 
in the same ways he's going to do that with us. And sometimes he has us go through that challenge to learn very important lessons that in the moment we can't see. And I know it all sounds really cliche because in the moment, like when people were telling me that, like that's how it felt. I was like, okay, well, this doesn't exactly solve my problem. Okay, great. He wants me to learn something, but what do I do in the meantime? I'm all by myself and I don't know what to do. I don't want to lose my apartment. I don't want to be on the street. I don't like, you know, these were all very valid things that I was worried about. You know, most times when people are in that situation, they rely on their families, but I'm not in a place to be able to do that. So I had every reason to be anxious and upset. But of course, you know, leaning on God is one of those things that we learn how to do in our walk, right? So, I mean, making someone feel belittled, like their, their faith is, is not enough or that there's something wrong with you because you, your, your faith is not in a great place in that moment, that's not gonna help the person have more faith. You're only gonna put them down even further and make them feel like they're not worthy enough to receive help or, or to be heard by God. It, it, was, it was not a, a healthy place for me to be at all and that church was not healthy. And, and if a church is making you feel that discouraged, like you're condemned, maybe it's time to go. Maybe it's time to go to one that is healthier for you. Like if you know that you know that you know, you are born again, that you have submitted your life to Christ, that you are willing to live a life for him, that you have been, you know, letting him work on you and clean you up and learn his word, you're his. If you are trusting in Christ's righteousness and not your own, then you're his. You might be struggling with things. You might be, you know, not dealing with like things that most people deal with. Rather, you might be dealing with things that most people deal with, but um, that doesn't mean that you're lesser of a Christian because you're struggling. And like I said, God isn't surprised. God still loves you in spite of everything that, you know, you're going through all the doubts, the frustration, and just because you you deal with doubts, that doesn't mean that you're not saved. Because that was one of the things I learned at this church too, that, oh, well, if you have any doubts, and that must mean you're not saved. Where does it say that in scripture? That's not true. That's simply not true. And I mean, okay, sure, maybe you don't find that in scripture. At least I can't remember any, any um, verses in scripture or any, like, um, stories from scripture that share that that anyone was dealing with that experience but that doesn't like who says like again there is nothing in scripture that says that oh no you shouldn't have any doubts because of course you're going to deal with doubts i mean i guess this is a video for another day but um of course you're going to go through moments where you doubt because god is a spiritual being god is not something physical like something tangible that you can pick up and hold in your hands and observe like God is spirit and even the things that are in scripture sometimes can seem so foreign to us yeah they can be applied to the real world but sometimes there are just some things that don't make sense when it comes to the spiritual versus the real world or the what we want to say the physical world because just because it's spiritual doesn't make it not real um but yeah, like people have this, mis or some people have this misconception that it's like, nope, you have to have all your faith in, in God. And they tend to over-spiritualize it and make it seem like it's something that it's like, okay, well, you're lesser if you don't just have complete, complete, complete faith that, you know, God is going to fix everything in your life. And, you know, I mean, like, they think of like doubting Thomas, right? You know, he needed to put his hands through the wounds in Jesus's hands in order to know that this is this is Jesus that this person was Jesus that was talking to him that Jesus is alive he didn't you know that he well it's not that he didn't die that he rose from the dead he didn't condemn him if you if you look back he didn't you know say oh how dare you have no faith and you know you're not saved because you're doubting the fact that I've come back to life I said I would come back and how dare you not believe? He, he didn't do that. God doesn't do that with us. God didn't do that with me. I came back. I, he embraced me when I came back. I came to him broken. I was in tears. I was falling apart. I don't think I ever cried so hard when I came back to him. Not just because, you know, yeah, like he was merciful, but also because I was going through something and it was really, really hard. And I was so thankful that, you know, he was there to embrace me because most people would be like, oh, you're coming to crawl back, huh? 
Well, that's what's just wonderful with God. He's not like that. He's not like that. He's there always waiting for us with open arms, ready to receive us, ready to help us, ready to, you know, just be by our side. He's on our side. He is on your side. And if you are going through a dark phase like I was, I am so sorry you're going through that. It is not an easy place to go through. I remember how alone I felt. And I'm sorry that this is what you're dealing with. Just know that there are people that will pray for you. Let me know in the comments. If you are dealing with this, I will pray for you. Um, but anyway, um, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And um, I pray you were blessed by this video. And remember, you don't have to put up with abuse just because you're in a church and there's all these people. Don't be afraid of confrontation. If you have to confront someone, do it, you know, with wisdom. And if, if you definitely know that it's a place that people are not going to change, look for another church. Don't give up on God. Remember that it's not God that hurt you. It's people. They're just people. They're flawed human beings, just like you, just like me. And there are godly, wonderful people that will, you know, support you and be there for you and pray for you. So anyway, those were, that was everything I wanted to share about that. I pray you're all blessed. I pray, I pray you all have a wonderful day and, um, I'll see you in the next video. God bless. Bye, church family.